Good evening. As Irina said, my name is Jean-Marc Fritz and I'm an associate architect in Sora Agency. An architectural town planning and landscaping firm based in Paris. The agency, agency has three associates that include David Mangin and Florence Bougnou, as well as around 20 employees. In 2004, we won the first competition. We were made responsible for the overall restructuring scheme for Leal, as well as being given project management missions for the underground spaces of the forum, the garden, the ground, ground level pedestrian as a sector, and the underground roadways. We were also asked to draw up specifications for the second competition concerning the cover over the forum, which was subsequently won by Patrick Berger and Jacques Anziotti with their canopy project. The entire Al district renovation operation was completed in 2018. It's important to understand that the operation we have worked on is the second large square operation to have taken place in Leal in less than 30 years. The first dates back to the 1970s and was considered to be a failure. To a degree, it was this lack of success that partially motivated the second operation. Here you can see Le Al as it was prior to 2004. In the center of the photo, on the right bank of the Seine, you can see the forum here, the dome of the, of the Chamber of Commerce, and the St. Eustache Church. In the distance, you can see the Pompe du Centre here in the photo. You can see Pompidou Santa towards the bottom, the Louvre Museum. Um, exactly how does the project for the renovation of the Al district meet the requirements of the theme covered by the 2019 November talks, changing boundaries of professions in a changing world? There were essentially four points. The spatial and functional complexity, the wide-ranging fields of intervention, town planning, public spaces, landscaping, architecture, infrastructure, retail outlets, and transport systems. The large number of clients and intervening parties City of Paris authorities, the public transport network and the owner of the shopping center, as well as shopkeepers and local resident associations, and four, the insistence of the media concerning the operation on a symbolic site. Since the 70s, the Al district has taken the form of a complex three-dimensional space incorporating both street and underground level, levels. Reaching from the lower to the upper level, the site provides an underground metro and a regional express railway network, an underground roadway, the first part of the underground forum shopping center and its car parks, the extens extension of the underground forum shopping center and its amenities, such as, as swimming pool, gymnasium, cultural facilities, and cinemas, the park and street level pavilions surrounded by the pedestrian sector. It is a complex site offering a large number of functions 
while also providing the largest gateway to Paris. 800,000 people a day use the, tra the public transport networks. Located in the city's historic center. The Al site reaching through to the Pompidou Center prior to 2004. The renovation operation took place, that took place in the 2000s, was a global operation with three different project managers the City of Paris authorities, the, public, the Paris public transport system, and Unibail, owner of the shopping center. The global operation covered all aspects of an interlocking urban project that incorporated infrastructures, transport networks, new and rehabilitated buildings and retail outlets, as well as public and landscaped spaces. A highly diversified team was needed to resolve all, all the various problems and, at the same time, be sufficiently collaborative to maintain the project's coherence throughout the duration of the operation. This meant that each intervening party had to be able to stand back from its particular field in order to understand and integrate the approaches taken by the, its partners. Another particularity, particularity lay in the fact that the project management team what was very rapidly identified as being the leader when it came to the directions taken by the project, playing a role that was particularly exposed to the media. The city of Paris authorities remain at a distance during the first period and, in particular, during the initial consultation phase. It is this context and this role played by the team members that I use here to illustrate the changing boundaries of professions in a changing world. The early 2000s saw the Al site being strongly marked in the minds of Parisians by the failure of the preceding renovation operation dating back to the 70s. The competition that took place between 2003 and 2004 was very closely followed by the press and the entire operation took place under the watchful eye of the media and within the framework of intense consultation with those using the site and local resident associations. The two problems that marked public debate during the competition and which called on us to invest a considerable amount of thought was as follows. One, should we simply demolish the renovation works carried out in the 70s or make do with the existing situation? And two, should we seek a monumental solution reaching up to the sky or take an integrated approach? To understand the present restructuring project, it is necessary to have a few contextual elements. This particularly concerns the period from the 1960s through to the beginning of the 1970s. This was when the original failure made itself felt. The fact is that the current operation has a history that dates back to well before our arrival. In the 60s, the site was occupied by the wholesale and semi-wholesale food market serving the entire Paris region. The market was installed in very attractive cast iron pavilions built as from 1853 by Victor Baltard during the reign of Napoleon III under the responsibility 
of Baron Hussmann, Prefect of the Seine Department. The market operated by night and overflowed into the surrounding district. Every night saw it creating an enormous traffic jam in Paris. As this was a wholesale market Parisian, with the exception of night owls looking for late opening restaurants, and a typical ambiance did not go there. For various economic and operational reasons, the authorities decided to move the market out to the suburbs in Rangis. The move took place in 1969. Renovation projects reaching far beyond the Al plan area had been imagined to restructure central Paris. Certain projects proposed creating 200 meter high skyscrapers over a site area covering 35 hectares. These projects were presented to Parisians who, as can be seen, were more than just a little perplexed and surprised. The projects were rejected by the Paris City Council in 1968. A particular episode over a two-year period completely modified the future of the operation. By 1969, the pavilions were emptied and the prefect accepted that they should be placed in the hands of various associations. Here you can see one of them being used as a temporary ski slope. A large number of artist artistic events, such as exhibitions, concerts, dance and theater, subsequently took place in the Balta pavilions. This led Parisians to discover the Balta pavilions and to learn two things. One, that the spaces were superb and the building easily convertible. And two, that it was therefore not necessary to demolish them. Press campaigns took place, petitions were signed, and people demonstrated. But it was all in vain. The authorities refused to change their minds. The heritage value of the 19th century glass and steel architecture was not recognized at that time. And the idea of rehabilitation with the introduction of new functions in an old building was not yet widespread. The summer of 1971 saw the beginning of the demolition of the Balta pavilions. Following the demolition works, the site was nothing but an empty space, a void that the Parisian nicknamed Le Trou des Halles, the Hall of Les Halles. And it was the initial trauma of Les Halles that led to the divorce between Persian and this urban renovation operation. 1971 should have seen the beginning of the first urban renovation operation for the Al district. But in fact, nothing took place. And it was at this point that the Italian film director, Marco Ferreri, had the idea of using the gigantic hall of Leal to shoot a western called Don't Touch the White Woman. Touche pas la femme blanche, in French. Starring Marcello Bastoriani and Catherine Deneuve. The film was an anachronistic parody of a western as well as a political, political satire concerning both Custer's Indian Wars and the eviction 
of the working classes from city centers due to urban renovation operations. Site works finally began in 1974 with the construction of the underground railway station. Parisians were still more than a little perplexed and surprised. Despite all the controversy, the public had not understood that the construction of this underground station was, in part, the reason for the demolition of the Balta pavilions. Nor had people realized just to what degree the district and central Paris itself could change as a result to this station. The Al district is located in the center of Paris and the Ile-de-France region. At this stage, the following question might be asked. At the time, what motivated and what justified such a large operation that called for such far-reaching destruction in the very, very heart of Paris? To a degree, the answer lies in the question. It is precisely the strategic position of Léal in the center of Paris and the Ile-de-France region, with the possibility of creating a central station and with its considerable potential property value that motivated this far-reaching operation. Added to this, the fact that the large and devastating urban renewal operations, which did not take into account the opinion of the inhabitants or the heritage value of the buildings, were common in the 60s. The 70s saw the introduction of the transport network interconnection plan for the Paris region. Previously, regional railway lines had gone no further than the main stations, making it difficult to travel from one suburb to another. Due to its central location, the Al site was chosen as a setting for the Paris main railway network interconnection station. The result was a considerable reduction in public transport travel time and an increase in the population located less than a half hour from Leal. This map shows in yellow and orange where users of the new Châtelet Leal station travel from, mainly the outer suburbs to the north and southeast. The population using the site changed completely, resulting in different users, type of shops and economic activities in the Al district. This operation opened the door of the center of Paris to the suburbs. Over a number of decades, the center of Paris had become increasingly run down. Its resident population poor and a large number of buildings had become, become slums. Slum blocks had already been demolished while waiting for urban renewal operation to take place. In the 60s, urban renewal remained strongly influenced by Le Corbusier's theories on the cities, as demonstrated by the doctrinal Plan Voisin. But the various large square urban renewal projects presented by the prefect in 1968 were all rejected by the city council. Having understood that a major urban renewal operation would not be accepted, the authorities decided to change strategy and base themselves 
on underground urban planning theories such as those developed by Edouard Utudjian and his GECUS study group, which, as early as the 1920s, proposed placing various amenities and functions below street level and developing underground transport system. The end of the 19th century saw underground Paris being occupied by technical and transport networks. The idea was to take advantage of the construction of the large station at a depth of 25 meters and the resulting pedestrian flow movements to use the entire site to install underground shops and amenities completed by a few buildings on street level. The intention was to create an underground world that would represent a large proportion of the operation, while also minimizing the, the impact on the city at street level. That was the new strategy of the decision makers at that time for Leal. The Paris City Planning Workshop, the public st structures, uh, further developed this project to closely entirely shops, facilities, transport networks, underground roads, car parks, and so on. Urban slab development with separation between pedestrian movements and car traffic. This was followed by a further project reviewing sequence. Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, elected president of the Republic in 1974, questioned the city planning workshop project and cancelled several buildings programmed for the site. Several new projects were presented, one of which organized diagonally across the site reaching out from the St. Eustache Church. Valéry Giscard d'Estaing chose the postmodern project designed by, Ricard, by Ricardo Bofill, whose layout you can see here. Elected mayor of Paris in 1977, Jacques Chirac questioned Valéry Giscard d'Estaing's earlier project and ordered the demolition of a building under construction. Standing in front of the model of the new Al Park, he declared, the Al only has one architect, and that architect is me. <coughs> he asked the architect Louis Arach to redesign the park. All the buildings initially programmed on street level, had now been cancelled, the last of which by Jacques Chirac, who, who only allowed the construction of small pavilions uh, along the park's perimeter. On the site itself, only the underground constructions were retained, resulting in most of the operation being located below street level. Angered by this decision and wanting to prove that an architectural ambition could be developed for Leal, the French Association of Architects launched an ideas competition. 600 architects from across the world sent in submissions. One of the five winners, Richard Nest, proposed a gigantic glass house over the site. Unlike the preceding project, the one by Leonardo Nietzsche was broken down into a number of complex objects. In a different vein, Grover Moore proposed a picturesque approach that drew its inspiration from a nostalgic view of a lakeside. 
Lying between comic strip and size function, the project designed by Jean Patou was significant as it expressed the fascination exercised by the void represented by Leal. With hindsight, and even though certain projects were interesting, none could offer a completely satisfactory solution able to answer the complexity of the setting and the necessary relations to be created between the underground space and the city above. But the profusion of projects, the focusing of the media, and the continuing interest of the public led to Leal becoming a highly symbolic setting. setting. Its ongoing controversies made themselves felt during the 2004 competition and have subsequently continued to complicate the work carried out by the various teams. It was an operation where decisions were always taken at the highest level by three succeeding presidents of the Republic, Charles de Gaulle, Georges Pompidou and Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, and the mayor of Paris, Jacques Chirac. These leaders systematically called into question the decision of their predecessors. Under these circumstances, it was clear that the operation could never be coherent. And the fact is that no one has ever been fully satisfied by the project. But at the end of the day, there was, there was one very successful scheme, the Pompidou Center in the nearby Bobo district. A few flattering pictures, like that of the glazed roofs over the forum by Claude Basconi and Georges Pancreac. But it is also a district dominated by roadway infrastructures, rebuilt to incorporate an accompanying architecture. Pavilions of no interest at all, despite the prestigious names of their designers, Jean Villarval and Jean Prouvé, and the barrel vaults around the park that falsely evoke the steel and glass architecture of the 19th century. Over the long term, the operation proved to be a failure. A new life for Les Halles. By the end of this first renovation operation, Les Halles site had taken a key role in Paris with the construction of the large underground station, the installation of the form with its four levels of retail outlets, and the creation of a vast pedestrianized space on street level, Les Halles had become Paris's second largest retail sector, lying just behind Boulevard Haussmann with its elegant department stores. Crowds returned to the site, both on street level and underground, but not very comfortably. The underground levels of the forum had low floor to ceiling heights, were enclosed, and received little, little natural light, which generates a feeling of discomfort for the public. Its bad reputation acquired in the 90s and due to a criminality that no longer exists, resulted in Leal acquiring a poor name in the eyes of the public. During this period, Parisians were just a little schizophrenic. Uh, when it came to the subject of Leal, while nobody liked it, everybody went there. Leal has a real asset, its large underground station being the site's driving force. It generates considerable flows, with 800,000 people using it every day. 
while over 150,000 people visit the forum. And 300,000 people pass through the pedestrian sector. The two main cast characteristics of Leal are now the crowds and its depth. 50% of users take a route between the station and street level, and half of these stop in the forum to buy something. 15% enter the forum from the street level without entering the station, and 35% enter the forum from the station without going up to street level. This explains why whenever there is a public transport strike, as sometimes take place in France, the form loses over 80% of its customers and becomes almost empty. Constructed in the 1970s, the station's transit hall had a fairly complicated layout and it was not easy for passengers to find their way around. The intention of the curved forms was to ease flow movements and colors were used to make it easier for passengers to understand where they were going. But the fact is that tourists and a large number of users lost their way in the transit hall and some of these, these are still missing. Uh, layout of the district, of the Hall district. Uh, Bertrand Delanoé was elected mayor of Paris in 2001 and, fairly rapidly, began taking a close interest in Léal. There were three reasons for this. Firstly, the site wave was suffering from wear to tear due to its overoccupation. Secondly, considerable improvement works were needed to increase safety on the site particularly for the evacuation from transport, transport spaces and the underground roadway tunnels. And thirdly, it had become obvious that the existing layout did not measure up to the challenges represented by this symbolic setting in the center of Paris and the Ile-de-France region. <coughs> Having learned from the previous operation Bertrand Delanoé knew that the operation could, not, could only succeed if it were coherent, continued to reflect the political will, and did not change course. He organized an urban project competition that gave the teams considerable leeway, especially in terms of the choice of programs to be included. Jean Nouvel, Rem Colas for OMA and Winimas for MVRDV submitted entries. Sera was declared, declared the competition winner on 15 December 2004. The city authorities did not, did not want this new operation to take place without a baking of Parisians. As a result, a consultation process was launched in 2003 and continued throughout the study phase. The process ended with the beginning of site works in 2010. Personally, I participated in over 40 of these consultation meetings, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Our diagnostic of the site was as follows when we began working on the project. One, a crowded, incomprehensible space with chaotic routes. Two, a gateway to Paris from the underground network via inappropriate spaces 
being the escalators serving a shopping center, offering few open spaces of quality. And three, an uncomfortable underground world badly linked to street level. <laughs> we were rapidly began questioning our level of interven intervention. Should we completely demolish the renovation works carried out in the 1970s or make do with what already exists? The impossibility of shutting down railway traffic for a long period of time and the considerable impact that the works would have on the shopping center representing over 3,000 jobs automatically imposed limits on the project. We were no longer in the 1970s, a period when we could demolish whatever we wanted and we felt the need dig a giant hole on the site. During our reflections concerning the place held by the district in the city, what we found particularly striking was the nearby presence of Pompidou Center. It could be seen from several points on the site and accessed via dense pedestrian flow routes along Rambuto Street and Berger Street. This link with Bobur had not been taken into consideration in the previous operation dating back to the 70s, which made considerable use of the diagonal layout. We considered it vital that the project be laid out along an east-west axis and positioned between the Chamber of Commerce and Beaubourg. During the first competition phase, we proposed demolishing all the pavilions and constructions that existed on the site and, in exchange, create a, as large a park as possible. This would be surrounded by three existing monuments the 16th century Church of St. Eustache, the 19th century Chamber of Commerce, and the 20th century Pompidou Center, plus a 21st century monument to be created in place of the Novotel Hotel, which would incorporate all the operations' new programs. These four buildings would dialogue across the park. When the city's, city authorities explained that it would not be financially possible to buy the two concert large, large site plots to build this fourth building, we repositioned the surfaces to be built in large flat building covering two hectares. It would be lower than the existing surrounding constructions and located above the former form and the patio. We then considered that this building should be a roof in a garden. To that end, we laid out a central lane running through the site from east to west that would interconnect areas that had previously always been separated. Basically, it was an extremely simple urban project. We took the site's three monuments into consideration, as well as the two major east-west pedestrian routes leading through to Bobo, and the long north-south promenade heading towards the River Seine, and placed a large roof over the entire east side of the site, facing a park reaching through to Louvre Street, all accompanied by a central lane provide, providing a overall unity. The aim of the project was to reinsert they are into the sequence of the large public spaces to be found in central Paris. 
To do that, it was also necessary to demolish a certain number of, of obstructions that blocked pedestrian movements. The entrances and exits to the underground world were tunnels represented a large part of this obstacle. Here you can see the impact of the tunnel entrances on the public space. We propose considerably reducing the underground network while retaining the necessary access and safety functions. The city authorities shared our approach seeking to reduce transit traffic in central Paris in the battle against pollution. This is the plan that we had developed by the end of the competition phase in 2004. Although many things have changed since, the main guidelines have been maintained. The sense of size that we, that we wanted to give the site can clearly be seen. Another of the project's important points was improved relations between the underground world and street level. We placed the encounter points between these two worlds on the central axis, below the roof. A new entrance leading towards the transport spaces was proposed further to the south on Rue Saint-Honoré. Certain of the form gateways were extended to reach the transport spaces to improve access and comply with emergency evacuation requirements. This was the initial layout. And here are the changes brought about by the project, including the construction of the new entry points. The underground transport network had become increasingly complex over time, with the incorporation of new lines and new underground connections. However, access to the network and visibility on street level had not undergone any improvements. The creation of new entry points and improvement made by the existing points to the existing points within the framework of Leal project met the need to improvements to the underground transport network. We also propose a rationalization of the station's transit hall by extending its surface over space occupied by the car parks and by creating a mezzanine over the tracks. This, sections, this, this section shows Place Bas, the patio, whose use has now been changed. Before, it was an enclosed, an enclosed patio without any link to the park. We wanted to make it the point where the underground space and street level encountered one another. This space, protected by a transparent roof, becomes a gateway to Paris that fully meets the needs of pedestrian flow movement. View of the patio and its, and its escalators. There were changes to the park project now imagined as a meadow positioned between two planted borders and crossed by the central lane. It is a solution that fully expresses the site's considerable size. The park is laid out along a grid formed by irregularly shaped pentagons, each measuring 60 square meters. Square meters. Our overriding objective was, in this very complicated context, to obtain a simple and comprehensible image of the layout. It was on the basis of these elements that we drew up the specifications for the second competition, 
that was won in 2007 by Patrick Berger and Jacques Ansuti with the Canopy project. The first site operation was the installation of the offices center covering 2.5 hectares. Its role was to serve all the HAL operations and incorporated the panoramic belvedere on the edge of the site to allow the public to see the progress of the work. We intervened on the underground spaces of the forum. These were the escalators prior to 2003 and their fire insulation system using roller shutters. And here are the new vertical circulation openings. We replaced all those, these elements by systems that were much lighter, transparent, transparent and luminous, using glass balustrade to improve visibility. And new fire insulation systems using invisible fabrics housed in the false ceilings. This had the effect of providing views from one level to the next, as well as, well as offering floors with incorporated lightning. The new relaxation spaces and work carried out on the ceilings with the aim of increasing fluidity. The passage below the canopy overlooking the park and the Chamber of Commerce. The patio and its staircase system giving access to the park from the underground form. Exit from the patio leading toward the church of St. Eustache view of the church from the patio, view overlooking the patio at dusk, the passage below the canopy at dusk, and in the morning. Reflection of the canopy in the mirror pools on the esplanade. The canopy seen from the meadow and the changing environment on street level. We have a very green park that contrasts considerably with the world lying below. And this simple image we wanted to reach, a meadow and the canopy. But this is an artificial park that has been planted over a concrete slab covering the underground forum. Plant rooms have been installed within the thickness of the soil. These concrete cylinders are the ventilation and smoke extraction stacks needed for the functioning of the underground forum. As the slab covering the underground forum has a relatively low load bearing capacity, it was necessary to use ultralight honeycomb modules as filling certain areas. These modules were covered by a layer of expanded clay that was lighter than the topsoil. The clay was blown into place using a sort of hose pipe. Then, was then covered using a mix of earth and stone that is less compressible than topsoil in this area much used by the public. Given that there was not enough time to lay a seeded surface, the lawn was provided in, form, in the form of walls. The lawn was then unrolled over the topsoil. To create the meadow, in just a few weeks, the lawn developed deeper roots. 
the trays were delivered by crane, positioned, adjusted, and installed in the prepared tray pits. With tripod support, the layer of vegetable soil is not dense enough to allow the trees to be uncovered. All of that to provide the planted alignment, groves, and borders. The central lane runs through the site from the canopy to the Chamber of Commerce. Works are currently being carried out on, the on this building to receive the private art collection of François Pinault, a French businessman. The museum will provide a new focal point defining the far end of the Al site. The surface of the lane incorporates the basement ventilation outlets. These are clearly handled using the same circle-based vocabulary and correspond to the concrete cylinders seen above. Given its position on the roof of the underground forum, the park needed to incorporate a large number of structures required for the functioning of the underground levels. Here, glazed roofs are used to bring natural light through the underground amenities. Here you can see another circular glazed roof. The various structures linked to the underground spaces and emerging on park level also include emergency staircase and fire brigade accesses. The garden has nevertheless been designed to diminish the constraints linked to underground spaces and encourage people to forget the artificial aspect of the park position over a slab. We have imagined this space as a meadow lying in the heart of the city. Atolls surrounded by tiered seating provide specific areas where the earth is deeper, allowing taller trees to be planted. Adjoining fiber-reinforced concrete benches run along the edge of the park, allowing pedestrians to take advantage of the sunshine. As early as springtime, crowds begin to stream into the park. One of the park entrances, located next to the St. Eustache Church. The, the agency also worked on the design of all the metalwork on the site. This included fencing, tree grills, seats, tables and chairs, as well as a bandstand and operational structures. The mirror pools are equipped with fogging systems for the pleasure of both children and adults when the weather gets hot. As the park, as, as the Al Park remains open at night, the lighting of the structures has been studied to complement the street lighting. View of the canopy by night with the fountains in, fountains in action. Well, the difficulty of this operation, a factor that made it all the more interesting for us, was the need to intervene in an occupied site. It was physically occupied by trains, retail outlets, amenities, the public and local residents, as well as mentally and psychologically occupied by expectations and wishes. These occasionally went back in time and were often contradictory. 
reflecting the desires of the site's various users. It therefore became necessary to make do with what already existed. But making do does not mean not doing anything. The challenge was to completely transform the site, both in the way it functions and its image, while also minimizing the impact of the operation. And the important thing for us was to realize a simple and understandable project in this complicated context. The final intention was not was for Leal District to once again become one of the major spaces in the center of the city, as well as a setting reflecting its statues as the main gateway to Paris. Thank you for your attention. John Mark, so this was uh, one project, one architect lecture, which I'm very happy to show you because it is something that is happening more and more at schools of architecture, that it's not uh, many projects and a lifetime chronology, but it is going deep into one project. And I ask you for your questions now, please. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I wanted to ask uh, if you could tell us something about the organizational structure of the whole project. Um, who, in fact, commissioned the thing? Who came up with the brief? Who commissioned the thing? Uh, if it was, uh, if it was, you as in uh, the architectural office was the, the sort of main designer, but if there are, were other designing companies. And uh, where, how was the, how did, where did the money flow from? Was it, uh, was it commissioned by the city or by the region or by the state? How, how does that all work? Because it's a quite a, I mean, it's a complicated project. So, so, do you know something, or were you interested in the background of of, of the whole thing? Yeah, sure. It was a, a little complicated. Uh, organization. Um, there were different decision makers. Uh, there were the city of Paris and the mayor of Paris. Uh, there were the president of the RRTP, the public uh, Parisian public uh, transport and work. Uh, the president of uh, Uniba is uh, that is the owner of the commercial center. And uh, they were not always um, uh, in, in the same. Uh, they did not always go to the, in the same di direction. But um, the mayor of Paris had the leadership to to decide what has uh, what was to be done. Uh, and uh, another thing very important was uh, that uh, the consolidation of the resident, the inhabitants and the shopkeepers. Uh, it, it was a little bit difficult at the beginning of the, of the study phase uh, because uh, because it's a very symbolic uh, site, and uh, everybody in, uh, in 2003 uh, remembers the, the, the previous operation, and uh, everybody wanted that uh, the new operation uh, went in, in that direction or, or that direction. And uh, it was, uh, we were fighting, we were fighting at the beginning, uh, during the three or four uh, first years 
uh, it was a very uh, it's proving <laughs> very uh, we are very tired <laughs> in the first years and after that when the operation uh, took a, uh, its route uh, it was uh, easier but uh, yes the beginning was a, a little bit difficult went to the study phase was a after that, uh, when uh, the crane uh, uh, came on the site, uh, it was okay. It was difficult because the, the, it's a very complicated uh, operation with uh, uh, different spaces, different functions. Uh, but uh, it's so easier. Excuse me. So how did the different organizations which took part in it, how did they sort of agree on what they would No, there were different levels of decisions. There were a, a first committee, uh, <coughs> operational committee, and uh, uh, above this, uh, there were uh, political committees, and uh, and there were uh, meetings, uh, secret meetings, uh, between the mayor of Paris and the president of uh, Unibail, the owners. Uh, uh, commercial center and, uh, and pri private meetings and uh, between the mayor of Paris and the president of uh, RRTP. Uh, but uh, yes, it's, there were different levels of decision. Uh, and your direct client was the mayor of Paris? Um, in most parts of the operation, uh, our client were uh, the city of Paris and the, the mayor of Paris. But we worked also, uh, we were um, allowed to work uh, also uh, for RRTP, RRTP, the, the public transport uh, organization, a little bit, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, first studies, and for uh, Unibail also. But um, the main work uh, has been done uh, and was ordered by uh, the city of Paris. And when you talk about all these levels, different levels of committees, as architects, have you been presenting to all these committees? Who has been presenting your project? Ah, um, there were two competitions first. The competition of... Uh, but after? when it went into the realization phases from the competition <coughs> stage on? I mean, did you present? We, we usually meet the, the clients. Uh, every week we had uh, meetings with the clients. So uh, it, was a, it was a continued process. Are you happy with the answer? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I used to live in, for, uh, in Paris for one year, and the place was exactly as you said. Everybody needs to use the place, but everybody hated the place because <laughs> it was not nice, and it's a very big change, so I would like to say that it's a very good job. And uh, my question is, uh, what was the final budget of of whole thing? What was the...? The, the final budget. The price. Ah, the price of the project. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not the project. The whole Lesal project. Ah, the whole Lesal project. Uh, I think it's about um, um, a billion of euros. But it, it, it includes everything. It includes the renovation of the railway station. Uh, it was a, a big renovation. It includes uh, the renovation of the 
on the reduction of the underground rail, uh, roadways. And, uh, and there were very uh, a lot of needs uh, about s uh, safety on the site because uh, the site uh, was built in the, uh, in the early 70s and um, the rules have changed uh, since since that period and uh, we had uh, to 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 to, uh, to rebuild a lot of um, uh, exits issue um, uh, vertical circulation and uh, and it's, uh, it's very expensive when uh, when you are working in um, in an occupied site you you cannot uh, uh, lead a big uh, uh, site work you have to uh, to work uh, phase by phase and uh, on little sectors and, uh, so, so it's, uh, if the operation um, last uh, 15 years um, the study phase was very long mm -hmm. because uh, there were a lot of uh, discussion between all the parties but the, the, the site works were very long because uh, uh, if nobody were on the site uh, we could do that in, uh, in two years three, three years but we started the site works in the um, 2010, 2011, and we finished in 2018. But uh, we can't uh, shut down the, the railway traffic. We can't uh, close the, the shopping center. So it's a little bit expensive. <laughs> Thank you, Jean-Marc, for that really fascinating presentation of the project which is just unbelievably complex and and almost impossible for any of us to grasp uh, just looking at it for for uh, one hour or several hours but uh, what strikes me most is that uh, well anyone in this room with uh, a little bit of gray hair like myself knows that 15 years ago almost no one was speaking about sustainability environmental issues were quite quite uh, forgotten uh, it was really maybe the, just the beginning of the period when we were thinking about environment and sustainability and yet your project could really be used as a great example of a sustainable project with with sustainable design with so much underground space um, probably very efficient in terms of heat gain and heat loss um, while giving the city of Paris a very substantial <coughs> green space that, that partially existed in the old project but which you uh, optimized in the new project. That having been said, if you were starting the project today how would you maybe rethink any of it to be even more sustainable, even more environmentally mm -hmm. friendly? Would, would, you, would the canopy roof, for instance, be a green roof? Uh, would, uh, uh, I don't know, any, any, any thoughts on that? I think it won't be the, the same project because we are 15 years later. But um, I think the, the main direction of the project uh, could be maintained uh, 15 years later. Uh, but uh, we can't make the same project uh, 10 years after. It's not possible because everybody's changed. The, People are not the same, the functions are not the same. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a real difficulty when you have to work over a long period of time. 
uh, you start working in, in, in 2003 and we, and you, we finished in 2018. Uh, and the, the project, uh, the layout uh, uh, has changed a little. But I think the, the direction uh, was maintained. Uh, I think I hope so. More questions? Anybody? Okay, Jean-Marc, thank you very much for the lecture once more. There's a th little thank you for, uh, from us so that you always remember your visit here. And uh, one last thank you very much. applause from the public. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome.